Hello dear friends, may God bless all of you. May the Spirit, the Spirit of God, His wisdom, His intelligence, His knowledge, His divine nature come upon all of you. May it come upon you right now, there where you are. And may he bring calmness and peace inside your soul. Everything that we suffer in this world is in the soul. Did you know that? The disappointments, the frustrations, the betrayals. It's in the soul that we suffer. It's in the soul that we feel pain. It's in the soul that we feel a toothache, for example. It's in the soul that we feel a headache. It's in the soul that we feel the pain of betrayal from someone that you gave all of your life to. You gave all of your life to someone and this person halfway through the journey betrayed you. They made light of your love for them, of your consideration towards them and your surrender. And they went to the arms of another person. Well, it's in the soul that we suffer. It's in the soul that we rejoice, we get happy and excited. It's in the soul that we cry. It's in the soul that we feel the pain of those who are in need, going through difficulties. It's in the soul that we feel sorry for those who lost everything in the flood, who died in the war. It's in the soul that we feel the pain of loss. And when the pain of losing a loved one, especially when this happens, wow, the pain is unbearable, so unbearable that the person falls into depression. And what is depression? I think, I believe, I believe that depression is something so deep. We can say it's the deepest pain that the soul can ever feel. And that's why a person who is depressed does not we even want to leave the room. They want to stay in the dark. They don't want to see anything or anyone. They do not want to feel any sort of pleasure because they are at the bottom of the pit. But the bottom, the bottom of the bottom of the pit. And then they find themselves desperate there, afflicted. This is all in the soul. Did you know that? It's not the body. The body, the soul, through the body, feels the hardships of life. It's also in the body that the soul feels the pleasures of the flesh, the pleasures of life. But it's in the soul, dear friends, that we suffer any sort of emotion, any sort of feelings affect the soul. The soul is the one that suffers. You can only imagine then how much the soul suffers, isn't it? Because the body, the body carries the soul, or rather the soul carries the body, because when the soul leaves, when the soul detaches from the body, the body has no action, movement anymore. Anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you. Pay attention. The psalmist, the psalmist led 
by the Holy Spirit, the psalmist, who wrote this text that we are going to read, he was used, guided, inspired, directed by God himself, by God himself through the Holy Spirit. So he said like this, in Psalm 116, verse 12, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? The psalmist, used by God, asks this question, meaning God entered, we can say, this psalmist and inspired him to write these words. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Meaning that God gives here the tip. He's asking a question, forcing us to think. Obviously, those who want. What shall I render? What is it that pleases God the most? The Holy Spirit asking him, what, what pleases me the most? What pleases me the most? What is the offering of all offerings that I want? What is it? That's what he's asking here. What can I give to the Lord? What can we surrender to someone as God who already has everything, who is the owner of all things, all things, including the souls, your soul, my soul, our souls, is already His. Every soul is His. So what is it that we can give to Him? What is the offering that is able to please God? But He showed, He proved with his own life, he, God, became flesh. He became flesh, came into the world and gave his life, his soul for all of us, for all of us. It doesn't matter if you accept him or not. He did his part. He gave. He gave the best he had. His own son. His only begotten son. Would you do that? I wouldn't do it. I already tell you. I wouldn't do it at all. Sincerely. I wouldn't do it. Honestly. But God had the courage to give to offer his son to give people, to give souls the opportunity of being saved. He gave his soul so that our soul could be saved. So here the Holy Spirit asks the question for each of us to answer. What shall I render to the Lord? What is the offering that I could give to God that will please Him. Which offering is it? How nice is this? How magnificent. He Himself says, He Himself says, I will take up the cup of salvation. I will take up the cup of salvation. Meaning, my soul that belongs to him and he's the one who will bring an end to it in judgment day. He will separate just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. When it's night time in the evening, the shepherds, they do that. They separate they separate 
the sheep from the goats. And he says there in chapter 25 of Matthew, he said there that the goats on the day of judgment, they will be placed on his left and the sheep would be placed on his right side. Here, for sure, dear friends, either you are a goat or you are a sheep. There is no way for you to say, oh, I don't want to be either or. No, you are either one or the other. That's it. You are a soul. And symbolically, before God, you are already a goat or you are a sheep. Who chooses to be either a sheep or a goat? You do. You do. Because as he asks the question, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me, what he's been doing in my life? He says, he answers what he wants from you, from us, from all of us that we will take up the cup of salvation, that we will acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, that we may acknowledge the offering that he gave us. Who is Jesus? Jesus came into this world. He offered his own self for you and for me, However, it's up to each one of us to either accept or reject him. Those who reject him are the goats. They will be placed on the left. And those who accept him are the sheep. Whom he will say to them, Come, O beloved of my Father, to the kingdom that has been prepared for you. Hallelujah. This is very glorious. So he says to those who want to be a sheep, he said, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. At the time which the psalmist wrote this, he did not know God's name. He did not know God's name. But when Jesus came into the world, so he gave, he made himself known, or his name known to every human being, Jesus, hallelujah. And his name, he shall be called Jesus, God, Emmanuel, God is with us. This shall be the name of my son, Mary was the blessed one. She was the first person on earth in the world, in every generation, to know the name of the Savior, of her Savior, of our Savior, God's name. So, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Read there afterwards and meditate on it. Psalm 116 verses 12 and 13. Read meditating, reasoning. Here you can see the offering of all offerings. This was God's offering to mankind and it's the offering that he expects to receive from each person, from each human being. It's their soul. That's why the holy text says that God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his son. So that everyone who believes in him would be saved. The only God loved the world in such a way that he gave his only begotten son. He only had one son. He only had one. But when... We, for example, in my case, when I decided 
to sacrifice my soul and give it and surrender it to Jesus, which is my life. Soul means life. Life is soul. Life is soul. Soul is life. When God speaks of life here in the Bible, he's speaking of the soul. When he speaks of the soul, it's life because it's eternal life. And death is also eternal. And life is eternal. So death is also not the death, oh, I was separated, my mother died, oh, I'm far from her now. No, she's not dead. She's alive because she became a sheep and she went to the right side of Jesus. So when a person dies, in reality, they are separated from the body and their soul will live eternity whether as a goat or as a sheep. My mother gave her soul to Jesus, and for sure she saved my dad as well. My, my dad also poor him. He suffered so much. He gave his life as well. God had compassion on him. So, dear friends, everyone, everyone, who offers their soul to the Lord Jesus becomes they stop being goats to become sheep. But all those who have rejected God's gift, God's offering, I still goats. And they will live eternity. Did you know that as well? However, they will be alongside the first rebel to ever exist in all history of humanity in heaven and on earth, which was Lucifer, who became the devil or Satan. So, everyone, everyone will live, every soul will live for eternity. However, the souls of the goats will be with the main goat, which is Satan. The souls who followed Jesus will be on his right side. They will be saved and they will live eternity and they shall take up the cup of salvation and call upon and exalt the name of the Lord for all eternity. Think about this, dear friends. Think of this text. Psalm 116, verses 12 and 13. Okay? May God bless you, and tomorrow we shall speak more. May God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.